Hello everyone, I'm Clay Jenkinson on my Listening to America tour. This is the replica of Thoreau's Walden Cabin. I'm near Concord, Massachusetts, and even though this is primarily a John Steinbeck tour, every time I get close to a site anywhere on the trail that has special meaning for America as we approach our 250th birthday, I want to stop and pay homage. This is a replica of the 10 by 15 foot cabin that Thoreau built about half a mile from here. We'll be walking down there in just a moment. I'm not fond of this replica because it's too nice, but it does give you a sense of the size. And one thing that really interests me is that it's about the same square footage as the Airstream that I'm traveling around the country in. In other words, Thoreau was experimenting in simplicity and minimalism. And what I'm doing is in its own way, kind of another experiment in minimalism. I just had the opportunity a couple of weeks ago to be interviewed by Ken Burns' film crew for a three-hour documentary on Henry David Thoreau. It was one of the great honors of my life. I think it's my seventh Ken Burns film, but in my view, Walden is America's greatest single book. For me, it's almost like a sacred text. It's almost like the Bible of spirituality. Thoreau really sang the song of nature. He said, in wildness is the salvation of the world. And so whenever I get close, I come here because it gives me a sense of what a really extraordinary person Thoreau was. I am in the cabin, the house, the hut, the shack at Walden Pond. It was 10 by 15 feet. He built it himself with a little help from his friends. It's an absolutely perfect day here. He spent two years, two months, and two days here. He established residence on the 4th of July, 1845. He challenges our values. He challenges the things that we prioritize. Simplify, simplify, simplify. He's, he's the great apostle of minimalism. He says that he, in this little house, he said a friend gave him a, a piece of limestone and he had it on his desk and then he realized, eh, I have to dust it. So he tossed it out the window. That's how strict he became. You cannot think about America as it approaches its 250th birthday without factoring in Thoreau, not only for what he said about wilderness, conservation, proto-environmentalism, how nature is healing and redeeming, America sort of as a new Garden of Eden, but also because he was a genuine political radical who said that government is best which governs not at all. He wrote on civil disobedience, which is the anthem for nonviolent protest and had an enormous influence on Gandhi and Martin Luther King and others. I come here on a pilgrimage every time I'm near Boston. It's always magical, but I can't imagine a better day than this. And all hail Henry David Thoreau, one of my heroes, one of America's greatest prophets, and a book worth reading and rereading and reading. I'll see you down the road for listening to America.